about um, the college process and what students need to um, complete before going to college and when they should begin the college process. So the college process should begin in ninth grade as soon as students enter um, their freshman year of high school, immediately they should be thinking about the co what college they want to go to and thinking about some type of future career or goal that they have for themselves. Um, it's important to start in the ninth grade because obviously grade average is very important when applying to colleges. These are some of the things that they look at. So um, I was gonna talk a little bit about the adolescent development, but I think I'll just touch on it really quickly and I'll move forward. Um, so adolescent development, what I wanna just kind of let parents be aware of, as teachers, we know that when we're um, dealing with our students, our students are, we may look and they're in high school, we say, oh, they're, they, they're mature now, they should be acting more like adults. But the reason why a lot of young people, especially those in freshman year that are coming into high school are not acting like adults is because um, their frontal lobes are not yet developed. So there are parts of our brain that allow us to make good decisions and allow us to think a little bit more critically about life and about future um, aspects and how our decisions today are gonna affect our decisions tomorrow. Um, so many of our young people, um, their frontal lobes are not yet developed, especially those entering high school and moving on even sometimes as seniors. And so when we send our kids to high school, sometimes we say they're on their own, they're, they're adults now, they're grown, they know what they're doing, but this is um, still a vital moment of their life where they need our support and they need our guidance. Um, our kids are living in their limbic world. So they have a limbic system, right? And the limbic part of their brain, what it does, it allows them to make foolish decisions. They just live very haphazardly. Um, they're not thinking about um, the effects of their actions. They're very impulsive. And so knowing that and knowing that they're living in that living system, we have to guide them and we have to help them to move forward. So um, let's not, and this is why the scripture tells us that youth is apt to err, right? The reason why God put that there is because he knew that physiologically their brains would not be developed um, before a certain time um, that they could be able to make those good decisions as they're moving forward in school. So as parents, we have to constantly be there with them each and every step of the way, guiding them, encouraging them, and helping them to make those positive decisions. I just want to throw that in there. So if you're concerned about your child still acting a little bit Im immature at this age, it's because of their systems of their brain. So graduation requirements. Um, in New York State, you are required to complete 44 credits. In some districts, and um, they require them to complete 22, but it's still the same amount of courses and classes that you need to take. Um, what they do in the city, um, they um, each course is considered to be one credit. But um, in the um, in certain states and certain districts, they make each course a half credit. So it still amounts to the same amount of coursework that you're doing. Um, it's just that um, it depends on how the school district calculates those courses. Um, also, you have to complete five regents exams. That's the minimum, five regents exams. So you have to have English, math, science, history. And then in the city, you also have what's called the plus one. So um, that's another assessment. Now, I do not um, subscribe to any um, student stopping at five regents exams. I think you should take as many as you can to move forward so that you can get what's called an advanced high school diploma. Um, there are also diplomas that come with certain um, extra criteria. For example, if you get if you're very good um, in mathematics and you take all of the math um, regions and you score an 85 or, or higher, you can get a distinction on your diploma in that subject area. So that's something else that um, high schoolers need to think about as they're progressing in this college um, process. So um, there's also certain courses, as I said, um, a pacing guide for these courses are in the ninth grade, you need to take English one and two, then social studies, math, science, art, foreign language, um, some type of elective, two credits in an elective, and of course, you have to take PE, physical education. Um, 
You will take English throughout your entire high school experience, social studies throughout your entire high school experience, and mathematics if you're going on to AP math, advanced mathematics. Um, but you have to take, sorry, you have to take the, um, the, the algebra course, algebra two course, geometry course, and then you can move to the pre-cal and calculus if you choose to. Um, sciences, again, you have to take your living environment, your earth science, you have to take chemistry, and then there are also AP advanced sciences or electives that you can take in that subject area. Um, you are required to take a year of art, and then so you can take other electives because you have to have at least eight electives to graduate. Um, foreign language, you have to have at least one year of a language that you're taking, um, but you can also continue in language and move on to take advanced language courses and go on to AP courses. So um, there's lots of options and I tell my students take advantage of all of the options because you never know where, where you may be in your future. You may need to have another language. You may need to have some other form of, of information when you're going into college. And as our pastor always said, um, Pastor Douglas said in the past, when he was our pastor, he said, no knowledge is ever lost. And that's something I always tell my students, my, my former pastor would always say that no knowledge is ever lost. So um, take all the knowledge that you can. Um, the SATs and ACTs and the SAT2s, all of these are exams that assess a student's um, knowledge in certain um, subject areas and that schools use as a measure for students to get into their schools. So the SATs basically is an entrance exam used by most colleges and universities to make decisions um, about entrances. The highest score that you can get is a 1600 and the lowest uh, and the average score that usually they accept students is like a 1060. So you don't want to get any lower than that on that test. Um, it's usually taken during a student's um, junior year. There are pre SAT exams that are given during your sophomore year, but ultimately the ones that colleges are going to be looking at are the, are the SATs, which are taken during your, jun your, fresh, your junior year, that first um, fall semester. All right, um, and it assesses math, it assesses reading and evidence-based writing. Okay, um, then there's the SAT twos, which are kind of different from the SATs. Um, while it's still a college assessment, the SATs um, is a subject assessment. So for example, if I'm a strong writer and I do very well in English, I'm gonna take the English SAT and that's all that I'll be um, assessed on. If I'm very strong in history, I'll take the history one, language, mathematics and science and so on. Um, it, it highlights the areas that you do really well in, um, in high school and that may be needed, especially if you didn't do very well um, um, in the math area on SAT. It's very good to allow them to see that maybe math is not my strong suit, but I'm really strong in writing. I'm really strong in science. And especially if you're thinking of getting into a medical profession, you want them to see that you're very, you have a very strong um, ability to understand sciences and to be able to do science type work. Okay, and then there's the ACT. The ACT is very similar to the SAT. Um, it tests English, math, reading, science, um, the, and writing is an option. The highest score you get on the um, ACT is a 36. Um, and why the SAT and SATs are very necessary is because the higher score that you get on these exams um, will provide you with an opportunity, number, number one, to get into the college, but also, um, provides you with a financial benefit. You get scholarships when you show that you um, have the ability to do very high and, and score very high on these particular assessments. Um, so everyone should be taking these assessments. Um, I will say that for, um, for this year, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more, things have changed a little bit because of the pandemic that we're cu currently in. Um, so um, some of these have changed and I'll tell you how. Um, so your, our standardized testing pandemic related updates. So the SATs, while you can still take them, CUNY, SUNY um, are not necessarily going to be looking at these grades for your admission this year into college. So I say, I will tell you that if you're a strong tester, if you know that you're gonna do well on this, um, take it. 
make sure that you take the, um, the test, but know that um, many of the schools are not gonna use this as a defining factor, whether or not you get into the school or not. So that should be something that you should have in your mind, right? So um, CUNY will blind test for 2021 application cycle and um, SUNY will test optionals. Like I said, so if you want to take it, you can take it. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay, so the blind test basically means that the SAT score is not required, and that's what it basically. Means. Okay, um, private colleges um, and universities have made individual decisions regarding their testing policies. So some may require it if you're going to a private college, but others may not. So if you're just applying to CUNY and SUNY, know that it is optional. But if you're going to a private college, you need a contact. Um, the person um, at that college to ask whether or not the college is accepting the test or not accepting us as a means of getting into the university. So college systems. So as we know that um, college, in order to get in, there's an application process, right? So for CUNY, the application is $65. If you are um, below income or are, and you will know because your um, guidance counselor at this point should, um, should be talking to you about colleges and should have invited you to get a waiver, okay? Um, that waiver will um, take care of the $65 and you don't have to take that cost out of your pocket and will allow you to have your application um, posted for all the CUNY schools. Now, when you're applying for CUNY, you can apply for all of them at one time. You don't have to do different applications, okay? Um, they've gotten what they're called like a common app, um, which means that you just fill out one application and you're allowed to go to where you can apply to those schools, all right? And all schools are located in the five boroughs of New York City, and that will be CUNY. And the cost usually um, for attending a CUNY school costs approximately um, $17,000. So cost is another thing that you need to consider when um, applying for colleges. You don't wanna go to the most um, expensive college, um, then you'll have to take out all these loans and then you'll have to put that extra burden on your parents. And also parents, you need to think about your pocket and what you, you can afford to give to your children, okay? Um, some more on college systems with SUNY. SUNY is $50 to apply. And again, um, there is a common application, so you do not have to do this three and four times. Um, and the cost of attendance at this school, at these schools, is approximately $22,000. And when I give you that much, I'm talking about per year. And that's if the student decides that they're going to stay on campus. It is much less if the student stays at home and travels to school, but most likely if you're going away to a, um, a SUNY college that's far away from your home, you will not be able to do that and you'll have to stay on campus. And that's where a lot of the pricing and money comes into for um, college, okay? I'm trying to go through this as quick as possible. Um, so college requirements, the application um, process. So when filling out the application, it's going to require um, certain documents that you need to get together, right? Um, you're going to have to do that college essay, right? And you're going to have to um, make sure that you complete um, financial aid and think about costs. Now, the college essay is absolutely one of the most important things that you need to do as a student. I cannot impress upon you how important it is, especially for this year when we're living in the pandemic. Because schools are no, are no, are no longer taking the SAT and ACTs and all those other college exams as the defining factor of you getting into the schools, what they're looking at are your grades and they're looking at your college essay. So you need to really tell your story because they're not going to have the opportunity to meet you initially. So you need to tell your story to allow them to understand who you are as a student, to allow them to see what struggles that you may have um, experienced um, in school if you did not do so well. And um, also what um, experiences you may have had about who may have influenced your life. Um, this, in essence, is your coming to age story. OK, you're talking about how you've grown as an individual and why should these college accept you because of who you are? Remember, they won't meet you. So you really have to sell yourself very well in this college essay. OK, so for this year, especially, you have to do a very good job selling yourself, writing this college essay and, not, uh, essay and allowing them to see 
who you are as an individual. Okay. Um, so financial aid, what is that? Financial aid is money that the federal government gives you, um, specifically the U.S. Department of Education that helps you pay for college, um, career um, school, or graduate school expenses. Federal student aid is available through grants, um, work study, and loans every single year. There are so many scholarships out there. There are scholarships for left-handed writers. There are scholarships for African Americans, scholarships for Caribbeans, scholarships for um, um, all types of things. If if you're um, if you wear glasses, there's even scholarships. There's there's so many. Sorry, scholarships. I'm just going to pull that back up again. So many scholarships that are available for you. So every student who meets certain eligibility requirements can get some type of federal money for you offset the cost of your family. So please make sure that you're doing your due diligence and looking, okay? Um, most times for these um, financial aid opportunities, they do require that you are a U.S. citizen or have eligible non-citizen status, okay? And have a valid social security number. If you have those three things, then you can apply for financial aid and also um, apply um, for scholarships. So the types of financial aid are grants. Um, which you do not have to pay back. And those are um, like the Pell Grant that you'll get through um, your financial aid packages um, or any grant that the colleges um, give to you, like the Shanker Grant or a UFT grant if you're, if you're with the United, if your school is affiliated with the United Federation of Teachers. Um, and I believe also AFT, also the American F Federation of Teachers also has um, grants as well. So try to reach out to as many organizations um, as you can to try to get those grants. Um, scholarships are given, you do not have to pay back scholarships. They are awarded for merit, community um, involvement, special characteristics. It could be your curly hair that you get a, um, a scholarship for. There are scholarships for everything, the most things that you would never think that there are scholarships for. Um, so apply for all those scholarships. Um, there's a Pepsi scholarship. Um, so many of these organizations, Nordstrom's gives a scholarship. Many different organizations offer scholarships. So just look them up and just please meet those deadlines. Loans, however, you have to pay back. It's a loan, right? Um, money's put up free to go to college, but when you um, graduate, you are supposed to start making those payments. And I would advise you to try to get more scholarships and grants than loans because you really don't want to have all these loans sitting after you've graduated and that you have to pay back because they do incur interest every year. There's also a work study program, um, which is basically a student um, employment program. If you are on campus or um, if you are even commuting school, you can work on the school campus, either in the library or the financial aid office, the bursar's office, and they give you um, work. And then what they do is they take part of your salary to pay for your education and they give you a stipend part of your salary. Um, most colleges have this opportunity. So if you can get it on, um, get a job on campus that will help you pay for your financial um, burden, please make sure that you do so. Um, again, financial aid, when you're filling it out, you need to have certain documents. You need to have the social security number. You need to make sure you have um, parents. You need to give your children your tax statement so they can get this all done. They cannot fill out these forms without this information. As, as a matter of fact, it's best that you do it online together at home. Um, you can go um, to um, the financial aid um, website. And I'm gonna provide um, Sister Esther with some of these resources so that they can be sent to you, right? Um, and that you can um, be able to fill this out. But basically, if you go to um, the, on the web and you Google financial aid application, it'll bring you to the financial aid application website. So, how can you prepare? Be informed, learn with your child and stay involved. Communicate with your child. Find out what's happening in their school. Ask those questions. Did your counselor talk to you about college yet? Um, if you start the application process. Right now, all students, all high school seniors should be involved in the process at this moment. So um, be involved um, um, doing academic checks. Um, making sure you're speaking with, with your child about their futures, what they think they want to um, 
have as their future career. And even if they're not sure, that's okay. Um, let them make a decision about something. And when they go into school, as they're taking their courses, trust me, they'll figure it out as they go along. Um, support your child in being well-rounded, a well-rounded young person. Tell them to get involved in other programs in their school, not just be that academic student. Play an instrument, join a team, be that student that um, colleges are gonna look at and say, you have the ability to not only go to school, but you have the ability in, case, in, in the event that anything should happen around you externally, you still will be able to focus on doing well in school. Um, many students who just focus on their academics only to go to college will not get as much scholarship money as those who have been in various other activities while maintaining good grades. So just keep that in mind. Um, support your child in being well-rounded. Oh, sorry, I did that already save. Um, when possible, apply for scholarships, save money. Um, if you have not started and your child is entering um, high school right now, start putting aside some money that will allow um, you to help them pay for their costs. And I will say something else about the Regents exam um, that I think most of you, uh, many people don't know, but what I love to tell my students and parents, if your child has not yet sat in any high school course that leads to a Regents, but studies on their own and takes takes the, the exam and gets an 85 on higher before sitting in that course that leads to the regents, they actually get the credit for the course without ever taking the course. This is something that they do not publicize, but I do it in my school with my students. Um, for example, the English um, regents is taken in the 11th grade. I have my 10th graders take the English regents so that um, this gives them the credit for the ELA class for 11th grade and that they're able to take um, a more advanced English course in the 11th grade instead of worrying about taking the region. So I do a um, SAT prep course with them in the 11th grade so that they can move forward and um, go right into AP courses um, and feel very confident and strong about their ability to write at that level. So um, I'll be more than happy to answer any other questions if you have about the college process, about advancing your students about um, and your children, about making them become the best that they can be because that's what God expects for us. He says that we are the head and not the tail. And so let us claim our, our spot at the head by doing right for our our students by staying with them, by supporting them, and by leading them into um, a future that's going to be successful. May God bless you and continue to keep you and smile upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.